What up, YouTube? It's your boy again, T Boogie, back in the place. Want to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody out there, to my brothers and sisters in the faith. I salute you. Uh, you know, we've been doing this three part series on the true Hebrew Israelites. You know, the first part, uh, <clears throat> we did, uh, you know, we did who are the true, he is true Hebrew Israelites, excuse me, and why you know, need to know who they are. Because the Bible clearly states that salvation is of the Jew, that to, to the to the Hebrews, the Israelites were given the promises of God, the covenants of God, the glory of God. Uh, to the Hebrews and the Israelites were given uh, the giving of the law and the service of the Most High. So it's very important for you to know who the true Hebrew Israelites are. The second part, uh, we know the second part of the series, we went over the uh, the curses. You know, we, we clearly identified what race of people that the uh, curses of Deuteronomy 28 and in Isaiah and all in, in the other books of the Old Testament, who those curses uh, clearly fit. We also read that until Messiah comes back, the true, true Hebrew Israelites will not uh, dwell in the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, you know. Uh, we got a, we got a people over in the land, a mixture of people over in the land fighting over a, a fighting over land that is not there. You got the Ishmaelites who are the Arabs, and you got a, a mixture of what are called Khazars or Khazarian uh, immigrants, and you also have the Edomites who are the who are the relatives of Israel or or, or the patriarch Jacob who are claiming that that is their land. But that doesn't line up with scripture as far as who's who's who land that belongs to. The Most High gave that land to Israel forever. He promised that land to Israel forever. And you know, because of the identity theft that Edom and the Khazars have perpetrated upon the world, uh, Israel, and because of the sin that Israel uh, committed against the Word of God, uh, everything's out of course, and things will not be back the way they should be. There will not be peace in this world, peace in this land, or peace in anywhere until the Messiah come back and Israel takes his rightful place in the land. So, uh, and you know, while we're talking about that, there is no history that is so documented in the annals of time or throughout. The, he the Hebrew Israelites, the Israelites' history is documented from past, present, and future. Uh, there are no people on this earth that can claim that type of documented or talked about history. Uh, the Israelites uh, began talking about the Israelites in the book of Genesis and, and there about from then on out throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament, the Israelites are spoken of. So once again, if you don't get it from Israel, you're not going to get it right. And if you go to a, a church uh, that is not teaching Israel, that is not teaching you about who Israel is, and, and, and why you need to know who Israel is, then I'm just going to go and say you ain't getting it right because you cannot teach this Bible without not without teaching about Israel. Uh, you know, so this third part of the, of the series, and there'll be one more part after this, and it's just a four-part series. I, I tried to chop it up into three parts, but I want to make sure you get it all. Now, this may be a lengthy lesson. We're going to be reading some Bible. We're going to be mostly reading the scriptures. Uh, we're going to be reading some other books, some, some some dictionaries and some other things like that, history books and whatnot. I even got some pictures I'm going to show you from the tombs and the, and the, and the pyramids of the, of the kings of Egypt. Because when you start reading the Bible, you realize that Egypt's uh, history and people are closely related or, or, or walk hand in hand with the children of Israel. So, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of reading. I'm going to forewarn you, this, this lesson may be a little lengthy, but I, I want to give it to you, you know, like we always do, going to give it to you 100. And, uh, but I just want you to get this thing because uh, we know who the curses fit. They don't fit those people over there. They don't know anything about being poor. They weren't sold into uh, uh, slavery by force and by ships. They weren't, uh, you know, their, their, their children don't fill the prison houses as we read. Uh, you know, they lend and, and, and don't borrow. The true Israelites, we borrow and don't lend. So we know who the curses fit. They don't fit those people call themselves Israeli, or as, as my brother say, uh, Israelites. 
because that's all they're doing, perpetrating a lie. First, the first perpetrators of identity fraud, uh, centuries and centuries ago. But now we're going to deal with this color thing. You know, we're going to deal with this color thing. We're going to prove without a shadow of doubt that the true Hebrew Israelites are a dark race of people. So that's the third part of this series we're about to begin. The true Israelites a dark race of people. So with that, we're going to get it kicked off. We're going to get it kicked off. But to get it kicked off, we first got to disqualify some folks. So we're going we're gonna, to, like I always say, we're going to go back to the beginning. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to run down the three sons of Noah. Because as, as everybody knows, who knows anything about the Bible, uh, uh, after the Lord destroyed the first world with the flood, there were he saved eight people alive. There was Noah and his wife, his three sons and their wives. And through these three boys was a whole earth repopulating. And we're going to read that uh, for those of you who don't know that. So, out of, so if you're on the face of this earth right now, your lineage goes back to one of these three sons of Noah. You know, and for you, for you so-called African Americans and Negroes or whatever, y'all think you know y'all came off y'all y'all from uh, y'all from Africa or y'all from the sea to Ham, who was the father of the African? Then we gonna show you tonight without a shadow of doubt. We are gonna prove you wrong. So with that, we gonna get it kicked off. And our first scripture reading is gonna be in Genesis the ten. We gonna get Genesis chapter ten, and we gonna start reading. At verses 1 through 14, then we're going to skip around. So we're going to go Genesis to, Genesis to 10. Genesis to 10. We're going to get this thing kicked off right. So, as I read. Now, these are the generations of Noah. I'm sorry. These are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Unto them were born sons, and unto them were born sons after the flood. The sons of Japhat, Gomar, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Raphi, Togomar. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided. In their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Now, who are, who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are what we commonly know as European, Caucasian, or white folk. And you just read there, by these were the isles of, of the Gentile uh, uh, populated. So you got your Ashkenazi, you know, you said one of the sons was Ashkenazi. That's where you get your Ashkenazi Jews. You can look it up on, you can type it up on Google and, and, and type in Ashkenazi or Ashkenazi Jews. It's going to pull up and they're going to be Caucasian. You can pull up and do your history on the Khazar. You know, they come from uh, 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 Germany and, and, and Russia, you know. So so it ain't, it ain't nothing new. Who is Gog and Magog? That's, that's Russia. Those are white folks, Gentiles. He said, by thee were the isles of the Gentiles uh, populated. We're going to go to verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Saptah, Ramah, Septijah. And the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth, as it, as he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Now I want to take a pause for the call. You know, we, we're going down, we're running down the the, the, the uh, descendants of Ham, and one of the sons of Ham's name is Cush, which is modern day Ethiopia. Matter of fact. If you go in, and, 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 and we're going to read some definitions here in a minute. We're going to read some definitions here in a minute. But you have Cush, okay, which is modern-day Ethiopia. And you have Mizraim, which is modern-day Egypt. Now, we're really going to be zoning in on Egypt here in a minute because, like I said, the Egyptians' uh, 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 history and the Israelites' history is closely tied together. And so we're going to be de really dealing in with them. But you can look it up on, on your own. I ain't telling you no, you can't look up. But we're going to read some de definitions here in a minute. But Cush is Ethiopia. And, and, and Mizraim is uh, Egypt. And the other two sons was Foot, 
which foot is the matter is, is modern day Somalia, okay, and Canaan. Canaan, that Canaan is the modern day. Uh, they were the Canaanites or the people who inhabited the Promised Land, which we know now now is Israel or modern day term Palestine. So these are the sons of Ham. Now we're gonna uh, we we'll, you know we we gonna I'm gonna read a couple more verses. Then we're gonna take another pause for the call. And in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Arak and Ak. Akkad and Kalina in the land of Shinoah. Okay, so we're going to start right there. What is basically telling you that Nimrod was the first man to become mighty on the earth, and he was one of the first really start doing open devil worship, but what I want to really draw attention to, they said the beginning of his, his kingdom was Babel, or what we call Babylon. So the first kingdom of Babylon was started by black people. Okay, so we, what we're going to do we're going to go to the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary, Compact Bible Dictionary. We got it right here. And we're going to go read a couple of definitions here real quick. So the first definition, the first definition in the Compact Bible Dictionary, we're going to go to page 213. We're going to page 213 of the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. And we're going to read uh, about Ham. And this is what it says. Ham, perhaps hot. The youngest son of Noah, born, a pro born probably about 96 years after the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. Remember I told you it was eight people that lived through the flood? Noah and his wife, Noah's three sons and their wives, okay? Just keep that in mind. Starting over again. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dog races. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. This is what the, what the book say. I didn't write this book, by the way. Zondervan Pictorial, I mean, Compact uh, Bible Dictionary. And it said, he became the progenitor or the forefather of the dog races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Now, you just heard them make a clear distinction that he became the forefather or the progenitor of the dog races, but not the Negro. What do they call you? What have they called you and your forefather before you? They called you Negro. So now we, we see and we understand that there are there are two distinct type of black people on the face of this earth. Because again, this is right after the flood. These three boys repopulated Abraham. Earth. We just disqualified Japheth because Japheth, they say, is the father of the Gentile. Who are Gentile, European or Indo-European or white folks. Okay? So, you know, you got India, all of Europe, uh, uh, Asia, and Russia. Indo-European, those are what you call the Gentile. That's where you get the name, uh, you know, they call you gentlemen or, or you know, they give you southern gentility. Uh, so, if you black, you either got to be a Hamite or a Shemite. So, what we just read here, that there are two types of black people. Because Ham is the forefather of the dog races, the Egyptians, the Libyans, Canaanite, but not the Negro. All right? All right, so moving on. Moving on. We're going to keep it tight. We're going to keep it right. We're going to keep on going. Uh, we just said he was a, Ham was the father of the Ethiopians, right? So we're going to go to the same, same, same book for right now. John Devan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary. And we're going to be reading out a page, off of page 160. 160. Ethiopia, a country exceeding south of Egypt from the first cataract of the Nile, indefinitely including Nubia, Sudan, and northern, if not southern, modern Ethiopia. Cush. The son of Ham, which means Ethiopia. Now, now we're going to find out what Ethiopia means, or what the Greeks or the Gentiles call Ethiopia. The Ethiopians had skin of different appearance. The Greeks named Aethiop, which means burnt face, shows a color to have been dark. There it is again. So they said 
The word Ethiopia came from Greek, which means atheop, which means burnt face or burnt skin. So clearly see that Ham is the progenitor of the dog races, but not the Negro. And everybody that came out of the lineage of Ham is is dog is a dog skinned person. Okay? So we just setting the foundation for our lesson today, our study group today. Uh we just and like I say, you know, we just gonna give it to you. We just gonna give it to you. So forget what you heard uh before. You can pick these this this compact Bible dictionary up. And it says, you know, about the three sons of Noah. So we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 20. We're going to skip down to verse 20. We're still in Genesis the 9. I mean, Genesis the 10. Uh, and we're going to pick it up, I'm sorry, at verse 22. At verse 22. And I read, the children of Shem, Elam, Asher, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram. Now here, right here, you got a couple of people right here. I want a couple of uh, 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 tribes of people. I want to pick up right here. You get, you see, you say it said Asher. These are where the Assyrians come from. The Assyrians and the Assyrians have a vital part in, in Israel history as well. And then we got our fact side. Our fact side is who, from whom the the Hebrew descended out of. He had a son called Eber, and we're gonna read that. Which in in, 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 in in Greek is is Hebrew. Is where you get the word Hebrew from. Is actually pronounced Hebrew. So we gonna keep it. We gonna keep it right. I'm just giving you a little knowledge, okay? And we are gonna pick it back up. Verse 24. And our fact side begat Selah, and Selah begat Hebra, and Hebra were born two sons. The name of one which was Peleg, for in those days the earth was divided. And his brother's name was Jotun. Okay. Uh, make sure I'm, I'm staying on point. Okay. We're going on down to 31. And Jotun begat Alamadad and Cephala and Hazar Myth and Jera. I'm struggling with these names, y'all. And Hodorim and Uzel and Dakla and Obal and Bimenel and Sheba. There it is again. Sheba. It, don't nobody, everybody know that the Queen of Sheba black. Okay? So there it is again. And Ophor, and Havilah, and Joabad. All these were the sons of Jotham. Oh, okay. All these were the sons of Jotham, and their dwelling was from Mesha, and, and as thou goest unto Separ in the mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands after they, their nations. Okay, so we just ran down the, the, the seed of Shem. Now, like we said, the, the Bible makes a clear, I mean, the, the Bible dictionary made a clear distinction of, of uh, Ham being the progenitor of the dog race, but not the Negro. So if we're going to take another pause for the call before we get back to the scripture. And we're just going to go to the dictionary. And I, what I got right here is called. The American Heritage Dictionary. The American Heritage Dictionary. And we're going to read a couple of definitions here as well. And we're going the first definition we're going to read is the definition of Negro. Okay, Negro. Okay, Negro, a black person. Note as black. And we're going to read another one is Negro. Okay, this is this is being having the features of a Negro, Negro, of being a proprietary human racial classification distinguished by brown to black pigmentation and often tightly curled hair, and including peoples of the indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa. That's what it is. Being indigenous, uh including peoples indigenous, excuse me, to the sub-Saharan Africa. So that's the definition of Negro. That's one of the definitions of Negro. Now we're going to read the definition of Gentile. And the definition of, in, this, in this dictionary of Gentile is, goes thus. One who is not a Jew, a Christian, a pagan or heathen, simply white. Okay? Or Caucasian, I'm sorry. So, you got the three definitions of, of, of Ethiopia or, or, or Kush, which is burnt face. 
You got the definition of, of Negro, which is dog, the brown, I mean brown, the dark skin, dark, dark brown, the black skin. Uh, and you got the definition of Gentile. So, like I say, J Fest is out the picture. We we just disqualified him as being an Israelite. Okay? Because to be an Israelite, you gotta be able to see the shell. Okay? And we know that the Caucasians or the Gentiles are the seed are the seed of JFAT. So now we got to deal with these two dog races of people, the Hamites and the Semites. Okay? So we're gonna keep it, we're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna keep it moving. Where we going now, we're going to Genesis 25. We're gonna go to Genesis the 25. Okay? We're gonna go to Genesis the 25. Gonna go to Genesis the 25. And we're gonna pick it up at verse 19. Genesis the 25 and verse 19. And I read. Now, where we where we picking this up at? Uh, you know, we 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 going on past the promises of, of Abraham, and we're gonna deal with that next in next week's lesson. But we're gonna deal with a little bit with, with, with a couple of Isaac's sons because again. If you go down through the through the table of nations, if you go down through the table of nations, which I have a copy here, you go down through the table of nations, then as you can see, as you can see, well, you probably can't see, but I'm 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 gonna make you see. There he is. Yeah, that's better. There he is. Uh, Ebor, or where the Hebrews came out of. You go all the way down. Look at that last name right there, Abraham or Abram, which his name was changed to Abraham. So we know that the, the God of Israel is always referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we're going to pick it up at Jacob right now. And uh, we're going to read about the birth of Jacob and his brother Esau, who was the father of the Edomites. So, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son, and Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah the wife, the daughter of Bethu, the Syrian of Panoram, and the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife uh, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the young. And when her days to deliver were, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Isaac was 60 years old when she had these twin boys. Now, a couple of things in these, couple of these scriptures I want to point out. Once again, this is Isaac. He entreated the Lord for his wife. He wanted to know, no way, hey, I'm getting, I'm 40 years old, I ain't had no kids yet. And Isaac knew that the promise was coming through his seed because he was the seed of Abraham. Matter of fact, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael, who was the father of the Arab, and we're gonna get into a little bit of that later on. But uh and, and no, Abraham wanted to have you know son so bad because he was 99 and his wife was 90. And so Abraham had a had a baby by his wife's handmaid named Ishmael. Abraham wanted Ishmael to be the promised child or what the promise was going to come through. And the Lord said, no, nah, you're going to have a baby by your wife. And the baby that he had by his wife was Isaac. He was the promised child. So now Isaac getting on up there in age, and now he wanted to know when he's going to have a child because he know the promise is supposed to come through their loins, through their genes. So God, he entreated God. He asked God. God uh, uh, was entreated of him, and his wife could see. And uh, she had two twin boys. Now, if you notice about the two twin boys, the one, the older brother Esau, he came out red all over like a hairy gun. He was red and hairy. But if you notice, they didn't give no description of Jacob. And you're going to say, well, bro, what's up with that? Because Esau was different 
they gave a description of him. Jacob looked just like all the rest of the Hebrew. There was no need to give a description of Jacob. Jacob. Because he didn't look different from anybody that they were used to seeing. You see what I'm saying? So there was no distinction needed for Jacob. But we're going to trace this color thing down. We're going to get it. We gonna, You can best believe that. Before you get off this lesson, I don't care if you got to you know, listen to it a little bit and pick it back up. Before we get out this, this part three, you're going to know the color of the true Hebrew. But back, trying to stay focused, back to, back to this. The other thing I want you to uh, understand and see that when the older brother came out, when Esau came out, the younger brother, why they was in the... See, when they when them two was in the womb, they were fighting and kicking against each other. That's why she said, you know, you know, Lord, you didn't grant me this wish, but I'm praying. He said, but they, 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 they feel like they fighting and kicking one another inside my womb. They grabbing each other inside my womb. She said, so if it's gonna be this way, why am I? Why did you let me get pregnant? Cause you know it was it was turmoil going on then inside the womb. But the Lord told her something very, very prophetic, and something happened that was very prophetic. She said, the older shall serve the young. Now I want y'all to remember this scripture, cause we're gonna go over the scripture again next week when we when we sew this 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 four part series up. But the other thing I want you to realize, she said he said to her was that there were two nations or nationalities in her womb and two entirely different type of people. That's why the, the, the description was given of Esau. Okay? It was two different nations in your womb and two different type of people. And, and, and if you read the Amplified, it said, the Lord said unto her, the founder, this is, the amplifier, this is how the Amplified uh, in verse 23 reads it. The Lord said to her, the founders of two nations are in your womb, and the separation of two people has begun in your body. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the young. Now, that's that's a lot of prophecy right there, because we know people, the, the knowledgeable Hebrew Israelites, the people who know, uh, understand prophecy. We know if you read the book over Obadiah, and there's some other scriptures, but particularly book over Obadiah, that the Edomites, who nobody talks about now, but they still around because they got to be around when the Messiah come back. Uh, the Edomites are going to be made to serve, and the ones that ain't made to serve are going to be cut off by slaughter. And I can read that to you. And you're going to be surprised, like we did in that less than several weeks ago, who's going to be doing the killing on the house of Esau. So for Esau to be killed, all cut off by slaughter when the Most High come back, they got to still be around. People just don't know who they are. But I do, and those who are knowledgeable of the scripture know who the Edomites are. So continue. But I just want you to understand that Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve sons of Israel. So I was just I'm still setting my scene here. Still setting my scene. So moving on. We moving on. We're gonna keep it tight, keep it right. We going on to uh we going on to Genesis. Uh We're going to move on down. I'm sorry. We're going to go to Genesis the 36. We're going to go to Genesis the 36. We're going to Genesis the 36. Going on down through the generations a little bit. All right. We're going to Genesis the 36. And we're going to pick it up at verse... No, we ain't do Genesis 36. We're going to Genesis 37. My bad. We're going to Genesis the 37. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. We're going to pick it up at verse 23. All right. Uh, Genesis 37, verse 23, and I read. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brother. Now you gotta let me say something for you. What we read now, we're reading about uh, you know, Jacob. We, we we for the sake of time, we ain't gonna read about how Jacob uh uh came, became to have these two sisters, which 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 became his two wives. And uh but Jacob had these two wives, and he also and each wife had a handmaiden, and Jacob had twelve sons by these four women, okay, which became the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Now, Joseph's favorite son was, was Joseph because he was the son of his old age. And, you know, jo Joseph, you know, he, he he looked fondly upon, I mean, Jacob looked fondly upon Joseph. And he even made Joseph uh, this coat of many colors. And uh, Joseph was always snitching and tricking on his brother. So his brothers didn't like him. So, and also, Jake, uh, Joseph used to always have these dreams that the Most High would give him. And he told his brothers uh, years before this thing happened uh, about this dream that he had that they would one day... The, his mother, his father, and all his brothers one day going to bow down before him. So they really didn't like Joseph. So what we picking it up in, in verse 23, what we picking it up in verse 23, uh, Jacob's brother was out there, you know, doing their thing in the pasture. And 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 Jacob, Jacob sent Joseph to his brother. So this is what we picking it up in verse 23. And I read, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brother, that they stripped Joseph out of, out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and, and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites, keep that in mind, came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh and going uh, to carry it down into Egypt. Now, you gotta understand, uh, you know, his brothers that threw him down into a pit, they took the coat off that his daddy gave, and daddy made, took, took their own flesh and blood brother and threw him into a pit. And they plotted to sell their brother. First, they wanted to kill him, but, you know, the older brother said, no, nah, don't kill him. He is our, our flesh and blood. We ain't gonna kill him. They plotted on the killing, but then when these Ishmaelites came by, who are Arab, they, they, they said, well, we, instead of killing him, we're just going to sell him into slavery. But as we're going to read on, we're going to find out this is all ordained, orchestrated by the Most High. It was for a reason and for a purpose. But, uh, you know, and these Israelites were down with it because, you know, you just don't walk up to people and say, hey, man, you want to buy my brother. They was already in the business of buying and selling flesh, buying and selling people for slavery. And who are the Israelites once again? The Arab. So here, here's your first account of black, of, of, of your, you so-called Negro. Israelites being sold into slavery. And your first person that ever sold you in slavery was the Arab, and that's who who you who got it. You got in your neighborhood selling you everything from your hair to your gas to your corner grocery store and all that are the Israelites. Okay, and, and let me say this one more time: This is not about separation. This is not about, not about condemnation. It's about identifying the correct people. It's about getting it right. It's about showing. Uh, a, a lost people who they really are and what they're supposed to be about. So don't go, don't get this wrong. This ain't about I ain't condemning or going against nobody. I'm just reading straight book, reading history, reading definition. You make your own conclusion. You you see who you are and, and what you're supposed to be about. Okay, picking it back up. Uh, picking it back up at verse 26. And Judah said to his brother, "What what profit is it if we slay our brother?" And conceal his blood. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, and our flesh, and his brethren were content. So they said, "Okay, well we ain't gonna we ain't gonna do him like that. We ain't gonna kill him. We just gonna sell him." Okay. Then they passed by Midianites and merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned into the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brother and said, The child is not, and I whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and, and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in blood, and they sent out uh, the coat of many colors. And they brought it unto their father and said, This we have found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it. And he said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph will, uh, is without doubt rent into pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. So what they did, they sold their brother into slavery. 
And, uh, you know, they sold their brother into slavery into Egypt. So the Egyptians, I mean, the uh, Israelites who call themselves Egyptians now, sold their brother to the Egyptians, which are a dog race of people. And we're going to figure that out here in a minute. Sold their brother to, a, to the Egyptians for 20 pieces of silver. And then they, went, they took his coat. They took the coat that his daddy gave him and had made him and killed a goat and, and poured blood all over the, the, the coat and took it to their daddy and said, you know, some wild beast and kill our brother, your son. So, again, lies on top of lies. That, but that's Israel. That's that's us as a people. Okay? So, we're going uh, to uh, we gonna push forward a little bit. We're going to push forward a little bit. We're going to go to Genesis the 49. We're going to go to Genesis the 49. I'm sorry, Genesis the 49. Well, no, no, we ain't. We ain't going to go that far. We ain't going to go that far. We're going to go to Genesis the 39. We're going to pick it up at Genesis the 39. And we're going to uh, pick it up at uh, verse 1. Genesis 39 and verse 1. And I read. And Joseph was brought down into e down to Egypt. And, to, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was, prosper he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of the master, the Egypt of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found found grace in the sight, in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put in, and all that he had put. Into his hand. So here we see, you know, even in, in, in even with Joseph's brother selling him to slavery, you know, if God is learning something on your way to learn something, no matter what situation you're in, if God with you, God with you, ain't gonna be nothing nobody else can do about it. Joseph was sold into slavery, and he was sold to the captain of the Pharaoh God. But everything that Joseph did, it prospered. Everything he touched turned to gold. So the man said, Look. I'm gonna put all my affairs in the hand of him because everything he do, in his everything his hand touches, it prosper. So that's what that's what's happening to Joseph right now. Uh, but one of the things that happened, one of the things that happened, is that you know the uh, Potiphar's wife liked Joseph. Okay, Potiphar's wife liked Joseph, and she wanted Joseph to. To Joseph, she wanted Joseph to lay with her. And we're gonna read a little bit of that. And we're gonna read a little bit of that. Uh we're gonna skip down. We're gonna skip down and uh to verse six. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a good was a goodly person and well favored. See, Joseph was a good looking dude. Joseph was real good looking, and, and, and uh, Potiphar White, she she just had to have my get. I mean, she, you know, she saw Joseph and she wanted she wanted Joseph. Verse seven, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, "Lie with me." But he refused and said unto her, "I said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master would it not what is with me in the house." And he had committed all that he had in my hand. There is no greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How can I do uh, this great wickedness and sin against God? See, Joseph knew the law. You know, he said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. So Joseph said, hey, this man that gave me every, put every, all his affairs in my hand. The only thing he done withheld from me is you. And, you know, number one, I ain't going to do it because he did that. He said, but I can't do it because if I did that, I sinned against God. So, again, he, Joseph knew the law. And it came to pass as he as she spake 
to Joseph, to Joseph day by day. I mean, she was after him. She was on him every day trying to get him to lay down with him. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie, lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that when Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there with him, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and, and got him out. So no, she she no she got to I guess she got so worked up so frustrated, sexually frustrated. She just grabbed a brother's coat, and the brother know hey you know he 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 ran, he ran about his clothes and no, uh that's that's where we are right now. And uh, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them saying, see he has brought. Uh, he has brought in him in an Hebrew, talking about talking about Joseph. He has brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us, and he came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. See, she is lying on her brother, you know. And uh, so we're gonna skip down, but what happened in there? She lied on her brother, and this is the first case of a brother going to jail. Uh, being innocent, she lied and said, You know, Joseph tried to lie with her, and you know, Potiphar came and threw him in the prison. Okay, so we just we just we just setting the scene. You're gonna see where I'm going with this in a minute. We're gonna skip down, we're gonna skip down to verse 21. This is after Joseph been thrown in the jail. Verse 21, and I read, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight. Of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph. Uh, Joseph's hand. All the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there. He was a doer of it. The keeper of the prison. Looked not unto anything. That was under his hand. Because the Lord was with him. And that he, and that which he did. The Lord made it to prosper. Here again. Joseph prospering in the prison. Joseph prospering in the prison now. Uh, and. Everything that he touches, you know, he was doing so good that the keeper of the prison say, listen, you just handle everything and I'm, and I'm going to take care of it. All right. So we're going we gonna to move forward a little bit. What I want to what, what get to is this right here. Uh, we're going we gonna to skip forward. We're going to move forward to Genesis, the 41. We're going to move forward to Genesis, the 41. And, uh. We're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis the 41, verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass at the end of the two full years, Pharaoh dreamed a dream. And behold, he stood by, and behold, came up out of the river seven well favored kind, which means cattle, and fat flesh, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, Seven other kind came up after, I mean, came up after them out of the river, ill favored and lean flesh, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill favored, lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored, fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke and, uh, and he dreamed a dream the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up, one stalk, ranking good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with, east, blasted with the east wind sprung up. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Now, what's going on right here? After Joseph was thrown in the prison, uh, there was a baker and, and I, I think a, 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 another captain had a dream. And jo Jacob, I mean, I keep saying Jacob, Joseph interpreted the dream. Then right here, Pharaoh was having some dreams that he don't know the understanding of. And Joseph was brought up to the king. And Joseph interpreted the dream, meaning telling the king about the famine that was about to come upon the land. So when Joseph told the king about the famine, the, the Pharaoh wanted to know uh, what could he do? So Joseph said, listen. 
Find you somebody that you know that's that's good about planning and all that, and put food up for the next seven years. So when the famine comes, you will have food for the seven years of, of the famine. So you know, I'm giving you a lot right here, but I'm just trying to show you that Joseph was brought up in Egypt. When Joseph went into Egypt, he was 17 years old. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna skip down. We're gonna skip down. To verse 38. Uh, and I read. Genesis 41. Verse 38. And I read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants. Can we find one such as this. A man in whom the spirit of God. Is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. For as much as God has shown thee all this. There is none so discreet and wise. As thou art. Thou shall be over my house. And according to. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. So, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh was so impressed about what Joseph, number one, him interpreted the dream, and number two, coming up with a plan to make them survive throughout the, 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 the famine, that he placed Joseph over all of Egypt, the whole country of Egypt, and only the king was greater than Joseph in Egypt. Okay? But this is again, this is God's plan. This is God's plan. So now there's a, now the seven years of fat have gone by. And now there's famine throughout the land. So we're about to go into Genesis the 42. About to go into Genesis the 42. And what we're about to start reading here is uh we're gonna read Genesis 42. Verses 1 through 9, then we're going to skip down, okay? Genesis the 42, verses 1 through 9, and I read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was, uh, Jacob, that's, that's uh, Joseph's father. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob sa said to his sons, Why do ye look up upon one another? Look one upon another. And he said, Behold, I have heard. That there is corn in Egypt. Get ye down thither. And buy for us from thence. That we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brothers. Went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin Joseph's brother. Jacob sent not with his brethren. And he, for he said. Lest peradventure's mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel. Meaning Jacob. And the sons of Israel. Came to buy corn among those that came. So everybody in, around the, the region is coming to Egypt to buy corn because there's a famine in the land. Uh, and the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he was, and it, I'm sorry, and Joseph was the uh, uh, Joseph was the governor over the land, and he was. It was that sold all to all people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren and he knew them. Now listen here. Now this is where it started getting good. But made himself strange unto them. How did he make himself strange to them? He spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence ye come? Come ye. Whence come ye? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. And Jace, Joseph knew his brethren, but they, they knew not him. Now, understand. You got Joseph's brother who sold him to slavery. Joseph now is about 34 years old. He been down in Egypt for, for 17 so odd years. Now, Joseph knew who his brothers were, but his brother didn't know who he was. Why is that? I know a lot of people say, well, they white and the Egyptians black. We're going to disprove that fact. Okay, we're going to disprove that. Not, not, not we ain't going to disprove that fact. We're going to disprove that lie. We're going to prove the fact that they, that Jacob's, I mean, Joseph's brother was looking at another black man. The only difference was he spoke a different language and he was dressed like an Egyptian, not a Hebrew. Okay, so, you know, when they, when they sold Joseph into slavery, he was a little boy. I mean, he was a 17-year-old kid. Now he didn't grow up to be a man. They don't know. They don't know who he is, but he know who his brothers are, and so he's speaking to them 
in an Egyptian tongue through an interpreter. So they really don't know who he is, but he know who they are. Okay. And uh, see, I'm supposed to read 41, I mean 42, through verse 9. Uh, verse 9. And Joseph remembered the dream which he had dreamed with them. And he said unto them, Ye are spied to see the nakedness of the land are ye come. And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Okay. Now, this is round time. This round time, I'm going to start showing you some pictures of what Egyptians look like. Okay. Now, I got a picture right here. And you can pull these pictures up anywhere. This is a picture of King Tut. This is a picture of King Tut. Now, look how the Egyptian, and these, all these things were pulled out of Egyptian tombs. And you know the Egyptians were big on paintings and, and in, in the cryptic tombs and all that. And they were big on making statues and likenesses of themselves. This is a picture, of, this is a statue of King Tut. And I don't know if you can see it right there. I'm going to try to pull this a little bit closer. But if you look right there, look inside his helmet or his headdress where it's, where it's cracked. Do you see that right there? Those are braids in his hair. This is a black man. This is what the ancient Egyptians looked like right here. All right. I'm going to show you another picture of Queen, a uh, statue of Queen Nefertiti. Okay. This is a statue that was found in the, in the pyramids and the tombs of the kings and queens. And you see they were big on likenesses. Look at the likeness that that, that they that she had made of her to go into her tomb into into those pyramids. Okay, that's Queen Nefertiti. Now this next picture was taken right off the tomb walls of King Tut's pyramid in his tomb, and that's King Tut looking at his adorable wife. This is King Tut looking at his wife, and this was on the. This is these these this all can be verified. So as you can see, the native Egyptians, not those ones over there calling them Egyptians, th themselves Egyptians now, the native Egyptians were a dog race of people. Dog race of people. That's why when Joseph's brothers came down, they didn't know who he was. They just thought they were looking at an Egyptian, a black man that, that was an Egyptian. Because he was dressed in Egyptian garb, and he was dog just like the rest of the Egyptians. They were dog, but they everybody knew they were Hebrew. Okay? All right, so we're going to skip down. We're going to skip down to verse 17. We're going to pick it up at verse 17, Genesis the 42 and the 17. Now, this is after, you know, uh, they came down trying to back corn, and he just scared them and made them, you know, they told them they were spies, and they were all scared of Joseph. But he said, look, go back. If, if y'all true, go back and get your father and your other brother and bring him here to me, and now I sell y'all some corn, okay? Now, verse 17, and he put, and this was, listen to what Joseph did to him. He, he got a little get back on him. He put a little get back on him for selling him into slavery. And he put them all together in war. I mean, he put them all together in jail three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, this do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your word be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. So he said, look, he threw him in jail first. He said, so if your word is true, leave one of your brothers with me here. Take this corn I'm finna give you. But if I, when I go and say, give you this corn, I want you to bring your brother, your youngest brother back, to, and you know, to me. And if you do this, then I know you're telling the truth. Okay? And they and they say one to another, we are very guilt, verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore, is this distress come upon us. See, now they worry. They worry because they say, man, if we wouldn't have did our brother like that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be going through this. So that's what's going on now. Excuse me. So we gonna we gonna kick it off. We are gonna kick it off. We are gonna go back to verse. We gonna go to. We gonna move on over. I'm sorry to, to uh, chapter the forty three, Genesis the forty three, 
And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. And the famine was sowing the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn, which they had brought in, out of Egypt. Their father said unto them, Go again and buy us a little food. And Judah spake to him, saying, The man did Solomon protest unto us, saying, You shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. Uh, if thou be with sin, if thou will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. So, you know, they, they done ran out of the corn that they were given, so now they got to go back down and, and to get some more corn, okay? So, we're going we gonna to skip down. Now, they didn't came back down, so we're going to skip down uh, to verse 24. All right, they didn't went back down there and, uh, to get some more corn. We're going to skip down to verse 24. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet and gave their, their asses provender. I mean, gave, the, gave their, the, the, the donkeys they were riding on, gave them food. And they made ready uh, the present against Joseph. They made, and they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon. And for, and for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him in the present which was which was in their hand into the house, and they bowed themselves to him on to the earth. And he asked them, asked them of their welfare, and they said, and he said, Is that your father well, the old man whom you spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, and he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made uh, uh, obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother, Benjamin, his mother's son. And he said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he, said, and he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. And he, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Sit, set on bread. And they sat on for him by himself, for them, themselves, and, the, and for the Egyptians, which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with Hebrew. For this is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Okay? Uh, and they sat before him, the firstborn, his birthright, the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled at one another. And he took and sent messages uh, unto them from before him, but Benjamin mess was five times as much as mess uh, as much any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. All right, so we're gonna skip down, and, and uh, to, we're gonna go to chapter forty-five. We're going to go to verse 45 here. Joseph sees his, his younger brother who he loved, and he starts to cry. But keep in mind, they still don't know who Joseph is. They still think he is, he is an Egyptian. Okay? They really don't know who Joseph is. Je Joseph yet to reveal himself to them. But here in chapter 45, Joseph is going to reveal himself. Okay? Verse 45, I mean, chapter 45, verse 1, and I read. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them that stood by him. And he cried, caused every, he caused every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brother, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brothers could not answer him. For they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brother, Come near unto me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore not, be not grieved, nor angry with yourself. He showed me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. So if Joseph reveals himself to him, they looking at this, this so-called Egyptian, and Joseph saying, Hey, man, I'm your brother Joseph. 
He said, and they got scared. They're like, man, we just sold this dude in, in this slavery, and he the number two man in the whole land. He can get us killed. But he, he eased their mind. He said, listen, don't worry about it. What y'all did, God, God had already had in the plan. He sent me down here to preserve like what he did. Because had not been Joseph the, the second ruler in all Egypt, his family would have starved to death because it was up to him. I mean, it, it was it was his call whether or not to give them food to eat or not. So it was all in God's plan. But the point I want to make is they went through all this rigmarole and they, they didn't know who Joseph was until he revealed himself to you. And as we seen that the native Egyptians, okay, we saw the what the native Egyptians looked like, their skin color looked like. So they were just one black man looking at another black man. But as we read before, you know, that Ham is the father of the dog race, but not the Negro, which was one of the sons of Ham was Mizraim, which means black, which another term means Egypt. So we just setting our scene. We just proving our point. Okay? So we understand what who Ham, who the who the generations of Ham are. We understand who the generations of Sham are. And so we're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna keep it moving. Now, so that's one instance of, 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 a, of a, a Hebrew man being mistaken for an Egyptian. We're going to give you another instance of a Hebrew brother that was mistaken for an Egyptian. Oh, before we move on, I got some more pictures I want to show y'all. Well, I tell you what, we're going to hold off on that. We're going to hold off on that. Let's go. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Let's go to the book of Exodus. We're going to pick it up at Exodus to chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at Exodus to chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 1, then we're going to skip. Okay? Exodus to chapter 1. Now, this is where Israel begins to grow even in bondage. Okay? Now, let's set the scene. Joseph is now dead. Okay? The Pharaoh that rises up after the Pharaoh that made Joseph the ruler over all Egypt, he dead, Joseph dead. So that rose up a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph, nor did he know the Israelites. Okay? So this is where we are right now. Now, now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man into his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and his and all his brethren, and all that generation. So the patriarchs are dead. Jacob's died. All the 12 sons and passed away. But as you know what they said, when they went down into Egypt, there was a total of 70 people. That went into Egypt. Men, women, and children that went into Egypt. Okay? So now we're going to skip down. We're going to skip down to verse uh, 7. We're going to skip down to verse 7. Oh, we already read, sir. Did we read the verse 7? No. We're going we're gonna to skip down to verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. And ain't, they ain't, ain't nothing changed. Because, you know, we, we have babies. You know, they say black people have a lot of babies. And even back then, they had multiple babies. They, you know, they used to have 10, 15 babies at a, you know, per household. And as you see, it, it made it, it, it gave you a, a fact. It said 70 souls went down into Egypt. But while they were down in Egypt, they said uh, 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 Israel multiplied greatly. They were having babies. You know, that, that will, that's what we do. We don't have a bunch of babies. And we ain't studying about no protection. You know, so we, we had a bunch of babies. Uh, keep reading. We're going to keep reading. Uh, verse 8. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal with uh, wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, 
they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the out of the land. Therefore did they set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens, and they built Pharaoh, they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, Python and Ramesses. Uh, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. As you can see, they began the children of Israel multiplied so, so big and so, got, so, got to be so many, you know, the Pharaoh that didn't know who Joseph was, didn't have no idea who Joseph was or who Israel was. They said, look, man, these, got, these people multiplying so much. He said, man, if, if a war break out, and, uh, you know, he said, we need, we need to do something with these folks because if a war break out, they join us to our enemy. They're going to overtake our land. So they, they made Israel into public slaves. I mean, you know, when we when our forefathers came over here as slaves, you know, we got sold off to, you know, private owners. But this is this you know Israel was public slave. They and they said over them hard tasks, man. They, but they said the Bible said the more work they put on them, the more they increase. You know, and just like one of the brothers said, you know, you you sitting around and you working all day, you get home, ain't nothing to do. You sitting across the table looking at your old lady, looking at your wife or your girlfriend. What else you gonna do? So when they got out of work, they kept on making babies. They became more and more. So they set over them hard taskmasters, and they started making them make mortar and brick, and they built treasure cities for these Egyptians. You know, all those tombs that you see over there, those were Israelites. Now, I want to take a pause for the call, take a pause for the call, and we're going to look at some of these, you know, in those Egyptian tombs. They big on painting their history and telling their history through pictures, okay? So I got a couple of pictures I want to show you, and these pictures are from the tombs. Off the tombs of the, of the Egyptians, okay. Look at these 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 brothers on this page, and it says Torbi uh, of of Rekma, dated, you know, and it tells you the date. Now these are Hebrews making bricks. Now we just read in the Bible that the, in Exodus that they made the Hebrews make bricks with straw and mortar. Look at these brothers on here on this picture. What are they doing? They making brick. They serving. They making bricks with straw and mortar. And this, again, this is straight off one of the walls in the, to, in the tomb. And if you don't believe me, you see the website right there. You can go on that www.bible.com and you can find this picture. You can find it in uh, The Last Two Million Years, a book called The Last Two Million Years. You can find it in, in, in the Reader Digest Bible, Herod, Herod Civilization of the Jew. All these pictures can be substantiated. That I'm putting before you. Uh, here's another. Here's another prick picture off the tomb. What are those, what color are those people? What do they look like? What color are they? Look at their hair. Look like afro and braids. These are Egyptian slaves. These. This is during the time of the before the Exodus, and we just read that they were making brick and mortar with. I mean, they were making mortar with straw and, and, and mud, making bricks. Okay. Great pictures, great pictures. Uh, here's another picture I wanted to show you. This this is during the time of the Assyrian captivity, when the first ten tribe, first ten and nine tribe went in captivity. These are <laughs> look at these brothers right here. Look at their hair. Look at their beards. Woolly and nappy. These 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 are not pictures that I drew. Okay, these are pictures that are documented on the tombs of these people. On the caves and the walls where these civilizations once were, they're still there, and people have gone in, excuse me, and taken these pictures. All right, these look like brothers. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on with some more Bible. You know, we're gonna move on with some more Bible. And I had okay. I got that. Sorry, that's late. Okay. We're gonna move on with some more Bible. So now we're gonna skip down. We're going to continue to read, I'm sorry, at verse 15. Now, uh, 
We're going to skip down to verse 15 and I read. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, uh, of which the name of one was Silpra, and the other and the other was Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, meaning the birthing stool, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Now, why would he tell them to kill the boy? Why? Because the seed is with the man. The man carries seed. I don't care how dark you are or how light you are. If your father is an Italian, then you Italian. If your father is a Hebrew, then you a Hebrew. If your father is a Hamite, then you a Hamite. Whatever the father is, the grandfather is, the great grandfather is, so on down to the son. Whatever the father is, that's what you are. So I don't care if you got a black mom and a white daddy. If your dad is white, he can't receive. That means you 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 a Gentile. If you got a white mama and a black daddy, your father can't receive. Then you are a Hebrew. Okay, that's why he told him if it's a boy child, kill it. And if it's a if it's a, if it's a girl child, you can let her live because the man can't receive. I even they even bring remembrance back to the movie Braveheart. When they were trying to kill, when they when, when the king of England was trying to kill out or breed out uh, 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 the Scottish people. And he said, he, he, he pronounced this thing called prima nocta, which means that when a, when, a, when a Scottish couple get married, the first night, the king or the person of the, the English ruler over that area, he had the right to sleep with that man's wife the first night of her marriage. And the statement he made, he said, if you can't get them out, Breathe them out because the man carried his seed. Okay, that's why Pharaoh told him, Kill the boy ch ch children, but let the women ch children live. Okay, moving on, uh, verse 17. But the midwives feared God, and they did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men and children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and they are delivered, and the midwives come, in, come unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. So you no know, Pharaoh called those midwives and said, Look, I told y'all to kill them, boy, baby. Why, why have y'all not done what I told y'all to do? So the midwives, you know, they say, look, man, by the time we get there to deliver those babies, the, the, when, by the time we get there, the babies are already, already popped out. The Hebrew women ain't like the Egyptian women. It take the Egyptian women a long time to have babies. By the time they call for us to come and help deliver the baby, the woman had already had the baby. So, you know, God, you know, God showed those midwives favor, and uh, he kept the men and child, children alive. Okay? Verse, uh, verse, 21, and it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them howl. And Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born, you should cast into the river, and and every daughter you shall save alive. So, you know, Pharaoh ain't dependent on the midwives no more. He said, look, he just told all the fact, all the Egyptians, look, y'all see a woman having a baby, she have a boy baby, I want y'all to cast all them, the boy babies into the river. Okay, so that's where we are right now. If we're going to go on down to Exodus chapter 2, Exodus chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up uh, at verse 1, and I read, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that the, that he was a goodly child, she made, she she uh, did, she hid him Excuse me, she hid him three months. Okay? Uh, and when she could not long, no longer hide him, she took him uh, an ark of bulrushes and dogged it with slime and with pitch and she and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the uh, river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit uh, what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down and to wash herself at the river. 
and her maidens walking along beside the rivers, riverside. And, and when she saw the ark among the flag, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. So, you know, you know, Moses' mother knowing that Pharaoh said he wanted all his people to start killing the, the little boy babies, Hebrew, okay? Uh, his mother hid him as long as she could. But when she could no longer hide him, she put him in a basket and, and, and pushed him down the river. And the sister standing there looking at him. When she saw, she saw Pharaoh's daughter uh, get her brother, which was Moses. And, 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 she, and they took him to Pharaoh's daughter. Now, Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses as her own. Okay, we're going to read that in a minute. But what I want you to understand and realize, if Pharaoh, <laughs> if Pharaoh looked like this, if Pharaoh looked like this, and his daughter looked like that, how could a white boy, a Caucasian boy like Charles and Heston, be raised in Pharaoh's house, if Pharaoh and them looked like this, how could a white child be raised in Pharaoh's house if he was being white and be passed off as Pharaoh's daughter's son or Pharaoh's grandson? Ain't happening. Ain't happening. And we're going to prove that to you in a minute as we get along in the, in the lesson. So we just we just setting the scene. We just setting the scene. We're going to skip down to verse we still in chapter the 2. We're going to skip down to verse 11. And I read. And this is after Moses had grown up. And it came to pass in the old days. When Moses was grown. That he, had, he went out unto his brethren. And he looked upon their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew. One of his brethren. Now keep his name. Moses knew he was a Hebrew. Because he was raised by his mom. Okay. And he, and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And, and, uh, and when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strolled together. And he said to him, what did, um, and he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore thou smitest thy fellow? And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killed the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. So, you know, one day Moses went out. He saw this, he, this uh, Egyptian jumping on his Hebrew. Moses looked around to see if anybody looking. Moses killed his cat and buried him in the sand. But what Moses didn't know, some other folks saw what he did. So the next day Moses goes out and he see these two Hebrew brothers fight. And Moses said, oh, man, why, why you why you hitting on, on, on the brother? And dude was like, man, you ain't nobody. Who made you a rule over us? He said, you know, you know, are you going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian? And Moses knew, it's just like with us, you know, we can't, we can't hold water. You know, it's telephone, telegraph, tell a brother. We're going to tell everything. Uh, he said, man, I got to get up out. Yeah, I got to get up out of here. He said, because surely this thing is known. He said, Moses said, if these jokers know, soon or later, everybody going to know what happened, what I did. Okay, so verse 15. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat upon the well. All right. Now, let's read verse 15. I mean, verse 16. Now, the priests of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled, their, filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came down and drove them away. But Moses stood and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? Listen what the girls told their daddy. Verse 19. And they said, An Egyptian delivered, delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds and also drew water enough and watered the flock. Did you see that? Now, Moses then ran up out of Egypt. Now, he didn't kill this one cat. So, Moses wasn't no pushover. He wasn't no punk. He killed this one cat. And so, when he ran up out of the land, he, he, uh, he came across his well in the land of Midian. 
And so Moses leaned up against, you know, probably trying to give him some rest. And these girls came up to water their father's flock. But every day, uh, these these other shepherds, these men shepherds, were, were bullying them out the way and get their, their stuff watered so the girls would have to wait. So Moses saw them, them shepherds bullying them girls, and Moses drove off those shepherds. So Moses killed one cat, and he would bristle up on these other cats and, and, and ran them off and let these girls uh, water their flock. But what they said was an Egyptian helped us. Moses, there again, Moses being mistaken for Egyptian. We saw what jo Joseph's brothers, the other brothers of, of, of the tribes of Israel, thought their brother was an Egyptian. And now here you have this Midianite, this Midianite woman who, who's an Arab. She, she calls Moses an Egyptian. Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh as Pharaoh's grandson. And now you got these Midianite women saying that Moses is an Egyptian. Why? Because Moses looked like the Egyptians of that day. Moses looked like these people. Moses had the same color, the same hair texture, the same everything as these people right here. So, you know, we we I, I didn't show you this, but I'm gonna throw this out there. Here's a painting, and on the, the subscription says a Semite slave endures a flogging by an Egyptian. So here you now here the guy on the ground is the one getting the beat, and then you see the guy with the stick in his hand. He the same color, look just like the guy that's getting the beat. This is right off the to one of the tombs uh, uh, in, in Egypt. Okay? So there's no, and you can tell they knew how to color white because look at the sheets or the robes that they wearing. So here you have an uh, Israelite or a Hebrew or a Semite, whatever you want to call them, getting beat by an Egyptian, but they look just alike. Okay? So. That's the other case of a brother being accused of being an Egyptian or a Hamite. Okay? Just want to show y'all, you know, hey, that, that, that they go hand in hand together. So, moving on. Moving on. So now, we're going to go to brother Shaul, Paul. Because Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. Now, this is centuries later after... This is centuries later, hundreds of years later, after the children of Israel have come up out of the land. This is after the Messiah has come the first time and has ascended back to heaven. This is in the book of Acts. This is in the book of Acts. And we're going to go to Acts the 13th. We're going to go to Acts the 13th. Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. That's in the New Testament for those who don't know. We're going to go to Acts 13. All right. We're going to go to Acts chapter 13. Uh, and we're just going gonna to set the scene right here. We're going to set the scene. Acts 13 and verse 1. And I read. Now there was, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets. This is what it's saying now. Certain prophets. And teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now, and Saul, which we know now his name was changed to Paul. But what I want to call your attention to is the brother they called Simeon, that was called Niger, which was a nickname. So, Simeon, we're going to look up the definition of Niger. Okay, we're gonna look at the definite definition of Niger, and I'm reading right now. I'll be reading out of the Plublets Bible Dictionary. All right, so you know I ain't reading. I'm just I'm reading out of this this dictionary, this Bible dictionary, and we're gonna read the definition of Niger. Okay, we're gonna read that definition of Niger. They talking about. Okay, here it is, right here. Niger, black. Is the additional or distinctive name given to Simeon, who was one of the teachers and prophets in the church at Antioch. Bam, there it is. They call Simeon Niger, which like modern day now, you know, when I was in school, we had this cat, you know what I'm saying? He was brother, we called him 40 Black, because he like he was 40 shades of black. I'm, that's what they did with this brother. His name was Simeon, but they called him Niger, which meant black. So evidently he was darker than everybody else that was in there. 
Because, you know, I'm black, but then we got some brothers that dog, and we call them 40 black, or we call them blue, or we call them blue black. So that that lets you know that that, that that Simeon was darker than the rest of the brothers around. All right? So I just wanted to prove a point. So now we're going to skip over to Acts the 21. We're going to skip over to Acts the 21. And uh, we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 37. Acts the 21 and verse 37. And I read. And as Paul was being led, now this is during the time, you know, Paul got arrested because, you know, people were out to kill Paul because he was now spreading the gospel and all that. So Paul, people were out, always sought to kill Paul. And this is one of the times that, that they actually captured Paul. And Paul wants to talk to this guy. And this guy that Paul's, uh, Paul is trying to talk to is a Greek. And so li just listen. We're going to read and you're going to figure out what I'm talking about. Verse 37, and I read. And Paul, and as Paul was being led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? And uh and the chief captain said, Who said? Can thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made an uproar and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? And uh listen what Paul said. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, the city, a city in Cilicia, a city, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee that suffer me to speak unto the people. Now, this man mistake Paul for an Egyptian. This man, this Greek, this Gentile said, can thou speak Greek? Which a lot of people don't understand. Paul spoke a lot of language because he was a Apostle to the Gentile. So he spoke, Paul spoke many languages. Okay. But the man said, Can thou speak Greek? And Paul said, uh, and you know, the man said, Aren't thou that Egyptian? And Paul said, No, I ain't no Egyptian. Paul said, I'm a Jew. And we gonna and we can read in other scriptures like we read last week, a uh, week before land. Paul said, I am a I am a Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And this man just mistaken Paul for an Egyptian. And we just showed you time and time again what the Egyptians look like. What color the Egyptians, the ancient, the native Egyptians, not the old one over that nine land that, that, you know, that have taken over the land, those Ishmaelites that started taking over the land in, in 639 to 740 uh, BC. They started invade, they had successive invasions of Egypt and they began to mix with the native Egyptians over there. So those people that call themselves Egyptians now ain't Egyptian. They Arab. Now you still see some of the native Egyptians in the background. You know, they don't never show them on TV or nothing. They show them in the background. You see those dog skinned Egyptians in the background. They don't, they don't never stick a camera in their face. Because they again they want to perpetrate the lie that they've been perpetrating for years. So, you know, keeping it 100 at all times. You know, I'm gonna give it to you. And like I told you, it ain't hard to find. Anybody want to dispute me, prove me wrong. That's all I can say. Prove me wrong. I got facts. And I don't kick number facts, and I don't kick number this word. You see what I'm saying? You just read it for yourself. This Gentile, this white guy, mistaken Paul for Egyptian. Paul said, no, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Jew. I ain't no Egyptian. You see what I'm saying? So we just keeping it moving. We just keep it moving. There again the next. So you had Joseph mistaken for an Egyptian. You had Moses raised in the house of an Egyptian, passed off as an Egyptian, and then he was mistaken for an Egyptian. Now here you have Paul mistaken for an Egyptian. Okay? And then you had the brother Simeon. He was so black, they called him Nijah. When they get that other little pet name they call us, you know, that's when they get that other little pet name they call us with the two G's in it, you know. But then this brother was so black, they, they, had, they had to give him a nickname. Called him Nijah. You know? So now... We finna get down to the meat of the matter. We finna get down to the meat of the matter. What color was the Messiah? What color was Yeshua Hamashiach? What color was the Christ? Now I know we've been raised up 
And everybody got this false picture of, of, of the Messiah. Long, blonde hair, blue eyes, skinny, Caucasian guy. That's the picture. And that's all due to the whitewashing of, 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 and the misrepresentation of our Messiah. The king of the Jews, the king of Israel. The one who will rule this world with a rod of iron. You know, do do you know due to the whitewashing of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci and all that. Because people want to be able to relate to a God that they, they that looks like them, that they can relate to. But it ain't real. It ain't real. And I can prove it ain't real. I ain't breaking all the pictures I had, you know what I'm saying, of, of the patriarchs like Paul and all them. I ain't wanna I ain't wanna bombard you with pictures, you know what I'm saying? But we finna get into the color of the Messiah. So we all know they call Jesus Christ the Lion of the tribe of, of Judah. Okay? So he came through the lineage of David. He came through the tribe of Judah. And, and as we know, uh, and we finna find out, and we gonna go to some of these scriptures these jokers use to try to say that the Messiah is white. But we gonna disprove that. Because like I say, here we prove all things through the reading of this word and understanding of this word. So we gonna see what we gonna see. We're going to read what we're going to read, and it's going to be what it's going to be at the end of the day. All right? So, first thing I want to do, we're going to go to Matthew the 1. We're going to go to Matthew the 1. Matthew the chapter 1. We're going to go to Matthew the chapter 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First book of the, Old, of the New Testament. I'm sorry. First book of the New Testament. Matthew the one, and we're going to read verse one, then we're going to skip down. Okay, we're going to skip down. We're going to read verse one because we just want to understand what's going on here. Matthew chapter one, verse one, and I read. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, really, I can stop right there. I, if I wanted to, I can stop right there. because As we saw on the table of nations, as we saw on the table of nations, that last name out of Abram, which his name was changed Abraham, came out of the seed of Shem, which came out of the seed of Arphaxad, which came out of the seed of Ebor or, or Hebrew, which is the Hebrew. And they just told you, and we just proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Hebrews are, are a dog race of people. Because we were always mistaken for Egyptians. And we just read right there. That this is the what the generations of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, so David came out of the seed of Abraham, and, and Jesus came down through the lineage of David. Okay, so now what we gonna do? We gonna skip down. Okay, we gonna skip down. Still in Matthew the one, we still in Matthew the one, and we gonna skip down. We gonna read two verses, sixteen and seventeen. And, jo and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ, meaning the anointed one. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David into, in the, into the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from, carrying, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So... We just, and I didn't bother reading all those begats, 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 but you can go back and read them on your own time, and uh, when you do it, you know, go print off that table of nations, and you'll see that Jesus came through the Hebrew, you see what I'm saying, Jesus came through the Hebrew, and who the Hebrew? They are dog race of people, you said, we, we read the definition of Negro, and we gonna read the definition of Negro again in another book, where it says, Thick lips, broad, flat nose, and woolly hair. Okay? So, and with woolly hair, going to line up perfectly with Scripture. All right? So, let's keep moving. We're going to go to Matthew, Matthew the 2. Matthew the 2. We're going to Matthew chapter 2. Okay? We're going to Matthew the 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Then we're going to skip down a little bit. All right? And I read. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. Did it say three wise men? No, it didn't. It said wise men. So I don't know. They, I know where they get the three, 
wide men, but it didn't say three wide men. That's another, you know, we learn all, learning something on our way to learning something. Just kill that three wise men Christmas fairy tale. That's some straight garbage. All right. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we, now, did that say your personal Lord and Savior? Did that say uh, my personal Lord and Savior? No, it said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Or king of the Hebrews? They didn't say, Where is he that is born my personal Lord and Savior? But, see, people don't want to talk about that. That he came and worked, and Jesus even told you himself, I have come not but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But people want to make him out of their personal, he's my personal Lord. Say, he said, they said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? See what I'm saying? So kill that personal savior, man. I don't hear that God. All right? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. That's the old point. All right. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. Now, you understand, Herod at the time, Edomite, he wasn't no true Jew. He was just king over Jew, over the Jew. He was put in power by the Romans. You can go through history and read, go back through history and read all that. But here, here is Herod, he king, and here these three wise men comes and we won't know where is he that is born king of the Jews. So the Bible said Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And the reason why all Jerusalem was troubled with Herod because when Herod got troubled, he started snapping necks and cashing checks. He started killing folk when Herod got troubled. He had a problem. He just, His solution was to kill it. So Herod is troubled, okay? Uh, verse 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where, the, where Christ should be born. Verse 5. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet. Now I want you to put a finger there. I'm going to show you where these, where these chief priests and all they got there from. Keep a finger in Matthew the 2. Keep a finger in Matthew the 2. We're going to flip over. Okay. We're going to flip over to the book of Micah. Because this is where they got their prophecy from. We're going to flip over to the book of Micah. And we're going to go to Micah, we're going to go to Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. This is where they got their prophecy from, from. Micah this 5, we're going to go to Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Micah the 5 and verse 2. All right, it's back toward the old, the back of the part of the Old Testament. Okay, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, and Micah. So we're going to Micah chapter 5, verse 2. We're going to read one verse. This is where the chief priest got this prophecy from. And it says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, get out of thee shall he come. For unto me, that is to be a ruler in where? Ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old and from everlasting. See, this is the prophecy. And they said, whose going forth has been from old to everlasting. See, Jesus didn't come from Mary. Jesus came through Mary. But this is where, he. that's why Herod had all these chief priests and stuff gathered up. Because they want to know, who, who is this cat that these wise men talking about? Who is this so-called king of the Jew? And this is where they got their prophets from back in Micah. Okay? So just 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 keep it, just stay with me for we don't go somewhere with this now. So he king of the Jews in the New Testament, and he king over and he's a ruler in Israel in the Old Testament. Same thing. Because the Jews, Hebrews, and like they from Israel. Okay? So he is king of the king, he's gonna be ruler of Israel, he's king of the Jew. Keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go we're gonna skip down to verse twelve. We're gonna read verses twelve through fifteen. Now, so all right, just get get you up to speed. Herod, you know, 
brought the he told the, he told the three wise men after he brought his chief priest and they they told him what the prophet was. Harry told him, "Look, I want you when y'all find a child, I want y'all to come back and tell me so I can go worship." But what Harry was gonna do once he found out what what the child was, he gonna go kill the child. He wasn't gonna go worship because he feel like this child gonna be is a threat to his his throne. So he told him, "Look, when y'all find out what his child is, y'all come back and y'all tell me." But the wise men, being you know, being being led by God, went did not go back into uh Herod to tell him what his child was. Okay, so now we down here at verse twelve, and I read. We still in Matthew the two, verse twelve, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Now, we have been all through this thing about the Hamite, their dog race of people. We've seen how a lot of the brothers, you know what I'm saying, was mistaken for Egyptians because they dog skin. We heard uh, Ethiop mean burnt face. Uh, Egypt or Mizraim mean black. We heard what Negro mean black and all this other stuff. And we saw the distinction that they made between uh, the Semite and the Hamite or the uh, or the Egyptian and the Hebrew. Now, if all these folk black and then all these pictures of, of Jesus is white, why in the world would you take somebody that, 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 that you're trying to hide, why would you take a white baby in a white family down into Egypt? Why would you do that if you try to hide? You gonna hide him amongst people that look like him. The family gonna move around people that look like them. So the Most High told Joseph and Mary to take the child and go down to Egypt and hide. So if a white family had just moved in Egypt, and at the time this was going on, Israel was under the rule of Rome. Although Herod was a king, he was a king that was appointed by Rome to rule over Israel. If Herod wanted to know where the baby was, all they had to do is say, look, they sent somebody down and he just said, look, I want to know where that white family just moved down here. And they're going to point right there to him where they go. But they couldn't because it was all black people down there, all dark-skinned people down there. So, once again, just proving a fallacy. You know, we've been lied to all these centuries and all these years. You no, know, we worshiping this white Jesus. And again, I'm not trying to make, you know, if people saying, you know, saying, I know people saying, well, what does it matter if you white or black? Well, if it don't matter, paint him green, paint him blue. But every time I turn around, y'all got him looking, you no know, blonde hair, blue eyed, white, white Jesus. If it don't matter what color he is, it matters because he said he's going to be ruling Israel. It matters that he's the king of the Jews. So it must matter if all these years y'all been painting white. If it don't matter, paint in black then. Go back through all, all these Sistine chapels and all that. Take all the white paint down and paint it black if it don't matter. But when it comes to identifying the true color of people and the true heritage and the true color of the Messiah, all of a sudden, well, it shouldn't matter what color it is. Well, take it down, paint them green. Take it down, paint them red. Or won't you just do what's right and paint them the color that he is? If it don't matter. You see what I'm saying? But you ain't going to take no white, blonde, haired, blue-eyed baby and take him down to ancient Egypt and try to hide him amongst black folk. Stick out like a sore thumb. That's the way it is. All right? All right. So, now, you know, I know what y'all saying. All right, man. You know, you know, I see you saying. But now, we finna get a few. We finna, we finna do a few little things. And get some color, put some cut, put some color on this thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Revelation. We're gonna go to Revelation, uh, chapter one, last book of the Bible. And we wrapping, we getting close to wrapping this thing up. I know we running long, but like I say, I'm gonna give it to you all the way, baby. But I ain't gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you right. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. You know, you may have to you know turn it off for a while, come back and pick it back up. But I'm gonna give it to you. We going to Revelation. Chapter 1, Revelation to 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. I mean, verse 14, I'm sorry. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Revelation to 1, 
and verse 14. All right. His head, and this is talking about the Messiah now. Okay, I'm going to read verse 13 so you won't think I'm lying about who I'm reading about. Verse 13, and I read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. Okay, and his feet, all right, remember he was girded all the way down to the foot, and his feet like unto fine brass if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice was the sound of many waters. Now, I don't care what you put in the furnace. It can be crystal white. If you put it in the furnace and it get burnt, it ain't going to be white no more. So it stands a reason to me. If his feet was like fine brass burnt in a furnace, then the rest of his body gonna be the same color. I ain't never seen nobody with black feet and white and white body. I ain't never seen nobody with black feet and a, and a white face. And they said his hair was like wool. I ain't no, you know, like mine, you know, wool. You know, you 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 don't comb and brush your hair. Gonna what it's gonna do? It's gonna curl up and knot just like wool. Okay, but I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet because I already know that's just one scripture. That's just one scripture. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to the book of Dan. Let's go to the book of Dan. Let's go back to the Old Testament. That was the New Testament. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Daniel the 10. Daniel the 10. Let's go to Daniel the 10. We're going to read one verse to keep it crispy clean and no caffeine. We're going to keep it right. We're going to keep it tight. Daniel the 10, chapter 6. Check this out. Still reading about the Messiah. Still reading about the Messiah. And his body was like the bird, and his face was the appearance of lightning, and his eyes and lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet the color of polished brass, and his voice of his words was like the voice of a multitude. Now, in, in, in Revelation, they said the voice of many waters. So, what are waters? Like, we, you know, waters are the people. Of many, it's now saying the voice like the multitude, like there's a lot of people. When he opened his mouth, sound like a lot. He just had that reverberation. But it said that his arms, what did it say about his arms? It said his arms and his feet, the color of polished bread. Now, that's two. The Bible said in, in, in the mouth of two witnesses, should the thing be established. You see what I'm saying? So, but we, we still ain't through. We still ain't through. We're going to go flip back over to Daniel 7. We still ain't through, man. We still ain't through. We're going to Daniel 7, and we're going to read one verse right here. Still talking about the Messiah. And we're going to read verse 9. And I beheld till the throne were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, and his hair and the hair of his head like the pure wool, and his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheel burning fire. Now, what did it say about the hairs of his head? Like the pure wool. His head was like the pure the hairs of his head like the pure wool. Now, they go three witnesses. There were three witnesses right there. But we still ain't through. We still ain't through checking this thing out. Okay, now, we're going to go to Daniel. Now, first we're going to read. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to the Song of Solomon. Because I already know what some of y'all saying. You know, it's, I'm, I'm going to take you where they go, though. I'm going to take you where they go. I ain't messed up. Because we prove all things around here. We're going to go to the Song of Solomon. Let's go to the Song of Solomon. We're going to get this on out the way. You know, I already know what some of y'all saying, some of y'all jokes, you know, y'all looking at this list. Well, and Song of Solomon say this, that, no. Okay. So let's go to Song of Solomon, chapter one. Song of Solomon, chapter one. And we're going to pick it up at verse five. Now, everybody want to make this be, you know, this is, this is a, a song Solomon was singing until. His uh his, his one of his many women he had, but I beg to differ. 
I was mistaught that in myself, but no, I'm more learning now, and I know this is a love story between God and Israel. This is what this is. This is what this is. This is not a love story between Solomon and one of the Shulamite women or whatever you whatever you've been taught. This is a love story between God and Israel. Verse five, and I read, "I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun had looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me." And they made me a keeper of the vineyard. A couple of things here. First of all, he said he black. He said he black and he comely. Okay. He said he looked good and he black. Okay. But he said his, his, now he said, look not upon me because the sun that made me black. The sun can't make you black. He was giving an analogy here. He said he is black but comely. But then he also said his mother's children were angry with him. Okay. Who is it that the, that their mother's children were angry with him? It was Jesus. Jesus said, I came into my own. They received me not. Matter of fact, you see, you were reading the book of Psalm, I think it's Psalm 53, it said that he turned his back to the smiters. And he said they plucked out the hairs of his, of his chin and they beat him. They put him on a cross. He said, my mother's children were angry with me. Okay? We're going to skip down. We're going to skip over the song, song of Solomon. We're still in the Song of Solomon. We're going to go to chapter 5. We're going to go to chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 10. Now, this is where they go to try to say Jesus is white. But if they read the very next verse or they read the rest of that same verse, They'll understand what he's talking about. Now, this is where they go. They see, see, see. But listen to this. My beloved is white and rooted. The chief is among 10,000. His head is as the most fine gold, and his locks are bushy and, and black as a raven. Now, see, first of all, they said his head is as fine gold. We gonna, I'm going to prove to you in a minute they're talking spiritual. Because then, first they say his head is as the most fine gold. But then they turn around and say his locks are bushy and are black as a raven. So that's you know they they try to go through that and try to say he white and he rooted. Then they say fine gold. But then it, how can your hair be gold and black and bushy? Don't make no sense. All right. So we gonna we gonna take a pause for the call right here. We gonna take a pause for the call right here. Okay. And we are gonna go over to Hosea the eleven. No, I'm sorry, Daniel chapter twelve. Verse 10. So keep a marker right there. Keep a marker right there. We're going to go over to Daniel. We're going to go over to Daniel. Chapter 12. And verse 10. We're going to find out what this white they talking about. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel the 12. And verse 10. And I read. Many shall be purified, talking about this is in the end time. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. See, that's talking about being made white as far as being pure spiritually. See, his beloved is white because he, who is more pure than Jesus? But then, he can, he, that's why he said he is white, meaning that he is purified. He has no sin. He was sinless. Not talking about he was white. It said that he was white because he was sinless, that he was pure. Because you can't have gold and black hair. You see what I'm saying? It's talking about how white he was as far as being spiritually. He was sinless. You see what I'm saying? So, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. That's the lesson. The true Israelites, a dog race of people. You know, I hope you got some understanding. I hope you see that the color of the true Hebrew Israelites is a dog race of people, is a black people. Uh, I know we ran long, but I had to give it to you. I had to give it to you 100. 
I had to show you pictures. I had to show you history. I had to read you definition. Definitely going to always come with the word of God. The word of God does not bag up history. The history bags up the word of God. Uh, next week, we're going to be wrapping this series up. The true Hebrew Israelites and, uh, and the identity theme. We're going to show you how the identity was stolen. And we're going to get into this thing about Esau and the Edomites and the Israelites and all that. Uh, but I had to show you, man, uh, there's two different types of black people on this earth. You got the Hamites and the Shemites. Uh, uh, definitely always mixed up. You know, so we done. Why you need to know the, the true Hebrew is like, are they all the priests of God? We've done the curses, who the curses fit. We all know who was sold into slavery by ships. Everybody in this land came over here on their own free accord, but our ancestors. Okay, don't play no game with it. Now, we just verified and proved the color of the true Hebrew Israelites. They are not Caucasian. They are not white. So, now, we're going to wrap this thing up and show you how Israel's identity was stolen and why it was stolen. Uh, so, that's the lesson. The true Hebrew Israelites, a dog race of people. To my brothers and sisters in the faith, I salute you. Shabbat Shalom to everybody out there. You know, and with all your getting, the Bible says, with all your getting, get you understanding. This your boy T. Boogie. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to holler at you.